North, East, South, West. Have you ever wondered where these words come from? It turns out that languages can get creative when it comes to naming cardinal directions. So let's investigate how the compass points got their names. We'll start from the Germanic branch of Indo-European languages, to which the English language belongs. As you can see, they're all related to the apparent motion of the sun, which is not that surprising. Once you realise the sun always moves in roughly the same manner, it's really handy to figure out the directions just by looking at it. In most cases, languages tend to name the cardinal directions similarly to what we've just seen, but even here there's plenty of variation between languages. First, we'll look at two of the most basic and regular systems out there. Polish and Ukrainian name their directions after the time at which the sun is in a particular part of the sky. On the other hand, Old Irish and its descendants name their compass points using the egocentric system. Do you see the pattern? Wait, let me rotate it. That's the egocentric system. You see, they must have first stood facing towards the sunrise and then described where everything is relative to their body. Of course, it would be boring if all languages used only one of these two systems. Some Kazakh guy probably said. Let's use both at once. Biblical Hebrew also couldn't really decide which one to use, but modern Hebrew discarded the egocentric words, instead creating nice expressions for what's going on with the sun. We've talked about Polish and Ukrainian, but what about the rest of the Slavic language family? Well, East and West are named similarly or identically to the words for sunrise and sunset. Meanwhile, when naming North and South, they fall to the most characteristic parts of day and night, again directly linked to the presence or absence of the sun in the sky. Hungarian is worth mentioning here for its quite poetic origin of the name of the sunset, while Lithuanian takes a completely different approach to naming the cardinal directions. Although its words for West, East and North come directly from the time of the day at which the sun is in the given direction, the word for South can also mean lunch, and guess which one was first? Yes, comparing it to other Indo-European words, we can be sure that it originally described the meal, only later acquiring the other meanings. On the other hand, North was originally only the time of the day, and then became the meal. Of course, we can't forget about the Romance languages, so let's start from their common ancestor. Latin West, East and South are quite normal, although it's worth mentioning that the words to orient and orientation come from the notion of finding the sunrise so that you can know all the directions. The other two words are examples of unusual semantic shifts. The second expression for South is related to the Germanic East through the Proto-Indo-European root for dawn. So at some point, Latin speakers must have simply forgotten which of the cardinal directions it described, which is quite an unusual thing to happen. The word for North, meanwhile, comes from an alternative name for the Big Dipper asterism in the constellation Ursa Major, consisting of seven clearly visible stars arranged in the shape of a plough. It rotates quite noticeably around the northern part of the night sky in the northern hemisphere. Of course, it would be uninteresting to just keep these names intact, so almost all Romance languages have replaced some of these names with Germanic loanwords. Participles of the verbs to raise and to put, or to lay down, or even new constructions with the exact same meaning as in Latin. Well, maybe it wasn't entirely replacing the old vocabulary, as the ancient words have survived in some of these languages, mostly in the forms of adjectives like Oriental and Occidental but they're not really the default ones used. Quite a similar approach to naming the North was also taken by the Navajo tribe from the Western US. While all the other directions describe the movement of the sun, here implicitly understood as a solid roundish object. The northern direction was named after the apparent rotation of the night sky around Polaris, with the slender, stiff object probably being an imaginary axis for this apparent movement. Next, we move on to the Indian subcontinent and Thailand, where the more widespread systems we saw before were influenced by the local geography. In Indo-Aryan languages, as well as many other languages from the region, the cardinal directions are named according to the east-facing orientation, except for the north, 
which is most likely named after the higher elevation of the Himalayan mountains. Tai, on the other hand, doesn't look at the mountains, but instead at the Chao Phraya River, flowing roughly north to the south through Thailand. The Gascon language, spoken in southern France and sometimes considered to be a dialect of Occitan, takes it to a completely new level. The Lond dialect is on the coast and has the elevation rising eastwards, while the Bayan dialect is located just north of the Pyrenees and also considers the orientation of traditional Gascon houses, Maison Londes. This system is quite remarkable compared to surrounding Romance languages, which mainly adopted the Germanic vocabulary. As you might have noticed, people used to prioritize the eastern direction, and north was usually considered to be the last direction, the inferior side of the world. This probably comes from various sun cults, which have left traces in later religions and cultures. For example, Christians and Indians used to build their churches in such a way that they would automatically face the east while praying, a tradition which is still observed by some people. Also, early maps were oriented in all sorts of directions, but the top of the map was frequently in the east, especially in medieval Europe. This system is not universal though, as you might be told by Finns, Armenians, or even Chinese. They seem to prefer facing south, which might have an explanation in the case of China. Archaeologists have found many ancient houses built to face south, a practice which is still a part of the feng shui system, and which might be an explanation for the shape of the Chinese character for south. You see, it kind of looks like the front side of a house. The ancient people of China prioritized south so much that they even named a compass, a device usually thought of telling us where the north is, the south pointing needle. Let's now go to the middle of the Mediterranean, to the archipelago of Malta. There exists a mnemonic phrase helping children remember the names of Maltese directions that consists of two sentences in the two official languages of Malta. As you might have noticed, there are eight words in total, and that's no coincidence or mistake. As it turns out, Maltese is too cool for school and doesn't call its intercardinal or ordinal directions like English does, with southeast or northwest. Here, almost all directions are named using traditional Mediterranean wind names, some even coming from words we've seen before, and some others being derived from names of other Mediterranean states. This practice of naming intercardinal directions separately from the cardinal ones is also present in Finnic languages, although these languages used to swap the directions' names, which doesn't exactly help linguists determine the original meanings, as well as in India, especially in the Marathi language, where the original directions are still being named after their Hindu guardian deities. Immanuel Kant once wrote that humans first think in terms of egocentric directions and that it is natural to apply these to the world. We've seen here that people do often use egocentric directions, and they also name the directions after their immediate surroundings. But next time, we will see that Kant underestimated how varied human languages can be.